As scientists, we get into this habit of writing in very precise scientific and academic style that for most people is really, really boring. But a lot of times we need to communicate to non-scientists and we might do this through writing a magazine article, either for a magazine for a general audience or a trade uh, a magazine uh, aimed at a specific audience. And that type of writing needs to be a lot more entertaining. It needs to be a lot more fun. So here are some guidelines to help you communicate more effectively when you're writing for a magazine, when you're, when you're writing to an audience of normal humans. One of the key things to make an article interesting, and now we're talking about magazine articles, not a journal article, not a thesis, not a summary of an article, but magazine articles written for a popular audience, is that you need to start and end with an interesting story to develop human interest. Humans aren't very good at dealing with abstract concepts like perceived supervisor support or organizational justice, but they can do really well with a story of, of Mary who is treated unjustly by Bob, her supervisor, and they can follow that. They're interested in that. It doesn't take any interest because you want to find out what happens to Mary and what kind of person Bob was and what did he do and how did she work around it. And you're just, we like stories. So it's, uh, you want to make it easy for people to follow. So when you write a magazine or a blog, include stories. So you want to uh, illustrate your points with real or imaginary stories and examples. So if you started off with a story, you could continue that story to make each point, or you could choose real life examples of maybe when you didn't have any uh, perceived organizational support and how you struggled um, in some way. Um, so you can use a common theme or a common character or your own personal experiences throughout the story to, to make it all flow. Now you want to avoid vague abstract descriptions that might bore the typical reader. So if I'm giving a definition of perceived supervisor support and use a bunch of abstract terms for it, which you'll find like in the journal articles, people might, might, might not like it. Rather, you'd like to say perceived supervisor support is when you can you can tell that your supervisor is behind you and he or she's supporting you and rooting for you and cheering for you. That's perceived supervisor support. Give concrete examples. In scientific writing, we don't use emotional words very much. Um, but in, in magazine articles, you want to use emotional words. Say, this is fantastic, that, this is great, that, this is a tragedy, that. So the reader knows how to interpret what you're uh, describing. Point number five is remember that whenever you're writing, your goal is to persuade. Not only, uh, uh, not just to provide information, but to get them to believe something, to do something. Now that's true for scientific writing also. You're always trying to persuade your writer, reader, that something's true and that it means something and that we ought to act differently because of that. And we need to uh, always be clear what we want people to believe or do. And that would be true both in magazine and uh, uh, academic writing. Another good principle in every type of writing is to use section headings unless the style doesn't really call for like a humorous narrative or a hundred page uh, summary or something. Um, clearly identify at the beginning of each section the topic that's going to be discussed in that uh, section. That just helps people go with the flow, stay on track. If they get lost, they can go back and look at the heading. Um, and then at the end, recap the question and answer and then transition into the next uh, section. Now that idea of recapping and leading on something next as a transition, that works real well in technical writing too. Uh, you want to avoid technical abbreviations and vocabulary unless you can use them to make your arguments more convincing. And usually you can't. Maybe one 
technical word or expression per article, but generally you want to talk like everybody talks. You don't want to use, we're going to contrast perceived supervisor support to perceived organizational support and perceived coworker support. No, normal humans don't talk like that. You want to talk like a normal human, and if you introduce some technical phrase, make sure you explain it really clearly so that uh, people don't get turned off by it. Avoid numbers unless they add to your argument and then use them sparingly. Humans don't like numbers. Um, maybe they can handle one number if it's too big or too small or got decimal points or it's negative. They don't like it. Humans aren't very good with numbers, so use them sparingly. Now, in scientific literature, we use them as much as we can because we want to uh, pr communicate real precise information. But in magazine articles, um, online articles, like blogs, you don't want to use too many numbers. Now, when you're talking about the costs and benefits of something, like the perceived organizational support, you don't want to say that that creates greater job satisfaction and organizational commitment. You don't want to use vague words to uh, describe the costs and benefits. Greater perceived organizational support makes people love their job more. They want to be there. They want to hang around with their supervisor. They want to listen to their supervisor and so on. You want to talk about real specific costs and benefits of uh, uh, whatever is happening. Tenth point here is to know your audience. Only write about things that would interest them in a style that would interest them. So if you're interested in a, a trade magazine on swimming pools, you can assume that people know a lot about swimming pools and you don't need to explain certain things. If you were writing uh, 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 to a general audience about um, swimming pools and you wanted to include some information about swimming pool work, you might have to include more background information. Um, make sure that whatever style that you're writing for can, uh, corresponds to what the editor wants. In scientific writing, in organizational psychology, we use APA style for everything. Most people don't want APA style. They don't want a table of references. They don't want Smith 2012 interrupting their reading. Listen to what your editor and whoever you're writing for wants and, and use that style, copy that style, file, follow those guidelines. Um, when uh, talking about other studies, when you're trying to bring scientific research into the article that you want, um, don't talk about the title of the study or the title of the article. People don't care about titles. Talk about the researchers. Talk about Mary Jones from UCLA who studied um, how people relate to their bosses. Um, give some context about the researcher um, and provide a little background information about them so that they can uh, um, understand. Now, you might not know anything about some uh, author, Eisenberger, for example. You'd have to Google him, find out where he teaches, things like that. Um, um, but you want to make them seem like interesting people because we like interesting people and we've, we're interested in what interesting people do. Thirteenth point here is to organize your paper around questions you're answering and topics that you cover, not by articles or studies. Don't say, oh, we know this about uh, perceived organizational support. And then this article said this, and this article said this. No, talk about some question like, what are the benefits? What do people of uh, perceived organizational support? What do people have to do uh, to show people perceived organizational support? Things like that. So choose themes or topics and organize your uh, magazine article around that. Um, 14 is be sure to choose a catchy title. Um, because that's going to, the title determines whether somebody's going to read it or not. So you want to make it as interesting as possible. Whereas in scientific articles, you want to get the main idea and provide enough detail so that people can tell what the article is about. A catchy title for is, might be more appropriate for a blog or a magazine uh, article. 
And then whenever you say something controversial, be sure to provide strong arguments to support your point and to respond to potential objectives that the reader may have. Um, now you might say, well, I'm writing a short article. Well, then don't say anything controversial. Focus on what's not controversial or focus on the one idea that you're trying to convince people of. Um, only say something controversial if you can can defend it and make a good argument for it. Otherwise, people aren't going to take you uh, serious. So in most magazine articles, you're going to want to stay from things that stay away from things that are controversial and focus on um, the specific issue that you want to communicate.